to have people here to be together, to get to worship our amazing God as one body this morning. So would you just sing with us? We're going to sing about the freedom that God gives us through his son, Jesus. We all have that if we've accepted him. We have freedom to dance, to sing, to worship him in whatever way we want to. So let's do that together. Let's sing UK. You came to set the captives free. You came to bring us liberty. My sin, my rejection, your blood and my acceptance.
Jesus really helps me when I'm having trouble getting into a place to receive from God is actually physically positioning myself a little differently. So I'd invite you just to set out your hands like this if you would like to. Just an open palm even can, can change your mind to make you think, you know, I need to be more open to the Holy Spirit, more open to whatever he might want to put in that open palm more open to what he might want to do in my life this morning. So Holy Spirit, as we as we stand with our arms outstretched to you, God, I ask that you would fill us in increasing measure with your Holy Spirit, that you would pour down your Holy Spirit in this room right now, that we would have that tangible sense of your presence that we might receive from you, Holy Spirit. Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. Well, he canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, no, your
laid on a criminal's cross. And darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. And that's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, know your grace so free washes over. celebrate and sing with all of you and recognize the work that Jesus has offered and done on the cross for all of us. When Jesus rose again and he ascended from the grave, he becomes the head of the church and that's you and me. And Jesus did his part by sacrificing and giving willingly of his life there on the cross. And now he asks us to fulfill our part. He's the head and we're the body to represent him in this earth on which we live. His words tell us, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. And then the author uses this little word for. In other words, let me tell you why we need to be patient with each other and to be gentle and to represent Jesus because there is just one body. There is just one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There's just one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father over all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. That's you and me. Heavenly Father, we just celebrate today this amazing, amazing body of Christ. We celebrate the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. We celebrate today the freedoms that you purchased for us on the cross. And we celebrate you, Jesus. We are so thankful to be together in this place, to sing together, to celebrate together, to be with one another, to be community as you meant us to be. And now, Father God, would you, would you answer the needs that are represented by all of the people in this place? Some, Lord God, since we were together in this building last, have, uh, with their mouth, verbalized fears and frustrations and concerns, Lord God. In their spirit, Lord, as they drift off to sleep, their spirits have grown with, 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 with the things that they worry about. Heavenly Father, that there is joblessness in our community. Lord God, there's uncertainties in our world. But Lord Jesus, we remind ourselves of the world, and, uh, of, of the word that just says you, you've always been the same, Jesus. You were the same today as you were a thousand years ago, and a thousand years from now, you're going to be the same, Jesus, unchanging and unchangeable. And so, God, we anchor ourselves to you, and we depend upon you and rely upon you to answer the prayers that we brought before you this morning in this place. 
And Lord God, just examine every heart. Just hold it in your hand. Squeeze it for a moment and let people know there's a God in this place. And Lord God, when we were absent from the building, you didn't go anywhere. You were still walking with us. Lord, how good it is to be together in your holy presence this morning. God, would you just address the physical needs that are going on today? Lord, for those who feel emotionally extremely vulnerable right now, I'm just thinking that there's vulnerability emotionally. There's been a breakup, perhaps. There's a longing to be with somebody. You just feel emotionally vulnerable right now. Circumstances in life, all those things. God, would you just anchor stability deep in their heart right now and let them know that even just mentioning that in prayer today lets lets them know there's a God who knows who's been understanding the needs and the prayers that are there today. Father, for marriages, for families, for homes, Lord, would you just undergird, just, just, just put a foundation of rest under the souls and the hearts and the lives of moms and dads and students in this place today. Father, we just look forward to the day when there will be peace, Lord God, because we're in your holy presence until then. Jesus, would you let your church be so united that we represent well the body of Jesus Christ in this crazy world in which we live. Jesus, would you bring peace to these united states of America? Lord, would you step into leadership and into those in authority? Would you influence decisions and actions that are made? And Lord God, let the church represent you so well until the day Jesus returns and takes us home. Father, we just love you and we love being together. We pray these things together and so much more that's in our hearts. In the amazing and strong name of Jesus, we pray. You want to give a shout out one more time? You just want to let it go? Come on. You've got three months worth of emotions pent up. Hallelujah, God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. God, you are so good. He's a good God, and we celebrate and rejoice. We are so glad that you are all together. Would you just look at somebody nearby you right now and just say hi? Oh, come on. Just don't move around. Stay where you are. Now sit down and hear what's happening this week at Life Church. Good morning and welcome to Life Church. We are so excited to be back in the building with you. And for those of you that are joining us online, we love that you're celebrating with us too. If you're new to Life Church, would you please text the word CONNECT to 701-490-490? 8207. We want to connect with you. If you're in the building this this Sunday, uh, stop by the welcome desks. Those are right outside the doors that you came in and um, let them know that you're new. We have just a small gift as our way of saying thank you for joining us. We are super excited to tell you that our summer camps are a go. This is such a great time for students to have a special connection with God and to grow in community together. Life Church wants to support you in sending your kids and so you need to go online. There's a link uh, in the comment section, on website, on Facebook, and it's in your bulletin. And the code is Life Church, capital L, all one word. Make sure that you use that code. It's just $64 to send your student when you use that code. This is for kids entering third through 12th grade, different weeks at different times. So make sure you check that out. Now, there are a whole bunch of activities happening live this week. So buckle up, get ready. I'm going to share them all with you. Our Women Out of Order meets on Tuesday this week, 6 p.m. in the lobby. Please bring your own bagged dinner. We'll also have root beer floats. This is for anyone who wants to have a good laugh and enjoy the company of other women. Our Celebrate Recovery will be starting again in person Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. CR is a Christ-centered 12-step recovery program for anyone struggling with hurt, pain, or addictions of any kind. It's a safe place to find community and freedom from the issues that are controlling our lives. 
hope that you'll join us for that. And Wednesday this week, we have so much going on. Our Remedy Youth is back together. They're having a barbecue at 6.30. That is for students going into seventh through 12th grade. Our Awesomeville kids will be starting their summer blast schedule. The boys and the girls are separating and they're doing some fun stuff this week. That starts at 6.30. And then the bridge will have our last two services for Sunday, or for, excuse me, for summer on June 10th and 17th. This is a conversational Bible study where Pastor Chris covers a book of the Bible, giving time for questions and interacting with each other, and nursery will be provided for the bridge. Our offering time will be different this week. And so we want you to notice that there's a table at the back of each of those doors to the sanctuary. There's an usher standing there. You can drop in cash or check into those buckets. A bucket will not be passed this Sunday. Um, you can also always give uh, on our text to give number. That's in our bulletin, our website. And then you can go to our website, lightchurchwilliston.com slash give, and you can give there. But the most important thing that we want you to know this morning is that we're praying for you. So if you have a prayer request, would you please text it to 701-490-8207. But if you're not comfortable texting, that's okay. Stop by the welcome desks, grab a connect card. You can write out that prayer request on that card too. And we will be praying over them. We have staff that prays over them together. And then we also have someone on seven days a week that is reading those requests and praying over them. So we hope you'll let us know how we can be praying for you. We are so excited that you're here. Thank you for bearing with me and getting through all the announcements and just praying you have an awesome morning. There you go, there's still life in Life Church. It's Sunday and we're here. Honey, you want to stand up for a minute? We're just saying hi. Hi, y'all. Oh, she wants to fix something. I do. It will drive me crazy. I love it. Uh, somebody else uh, in the lobby in between services picked a piece of lint off my shirt here. Good for them. Good for them. It was her. And, uh, and then between the two of you, if this row leaves, I'm done. So that's just the way that goes. Wow. I don't know about you, you know, I was just kind of thinking about what, what are we going to say our first Sunday back in the building? I thought of this, I thought, I don't know about you, I did not get COVID-19, but how many gained COVID-19? Anybody? Like, it just came on. One of those, somebody said they lost 25 pounds, God bless them, but we hardly went out to eat, and my wife was just cooking up a storm, and, and uh, it was all good, so, boy, you guys look really, really good. Some of you, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I hope we remember all of your names. And so, uh, I'm Chris, this is Robin. So on the count of three, everybody tell me your name. One, two, three. Mariah. Mariah. I heard Mariah. <laughs> Why did I hear that above all the rest of the names? Anyway. Um, when I was thinking about this service, I thought, what am I going to share? And this is a standalone message. This is just our first Sunday back in the building kind of a message. Next week, we're going to start a brand new series with you. Um, we're just going to camp out for a little while on a topic. So the title of next series, which begins next Sunday, is How to Love Someone You Can't Stand. Anybody want to come back for that one? So we're going to be there for a little bit. But today, this is where we are. And I was thinking about, what do you, what do you share on the first Sunday back? And, and uh, in my devotional time some weeks ago, this, this passage popped into my head. And I thought, oh, this is exactly where we're going to go. And so uh, go ahead and put that first scripture, Psalm 122, verse number one. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Are you with me? Come on. Yeah. You know, normally it's like, let's get up, it's time for church. No, you know? But today we're happy to be, and you know what I love? And I love verse number two. Look what verse number two says. Verse number two, look at And now, here we are. Can you believe it? It's only been three months. I mean, three months ago, the last time you came in the building, the wind was blowing. And it's still blowing. But anyway, um... I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, I'll tell you why as we get in the message a little bit. Um, 
I, don't, I grew up in a mainline denominational church, and, and I, I, I just been really honest with you, I, I dreaded going to church on Sundays. It was boring, and once I got there, I was happy to get there, only to get that next hour done with, because then it was done for the rest of the week. I never, ever, ever want church to be boring for you. If you are ever bored at church, at this church, would you please come talk to me? I will start juggling and riding a unicycle if I have to. I never want you to be bored when you come to church. We should never be bored because we are coming together with God's community, with God's people, wherever they are in a faith journey, and we're worshiping the living, loving, amazing God. It should never be boring at church. I always want to be relevant and have it exciting here. And now I, I thought, I thought as I, I put this together, you know, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Well, why? Why, why, why? I mean, I know why I'm excited to get here. I think I know why you're excited to get here. But what about people who aren't here? Why would they be excited to be at church? And so I thought, uh, we, we in the church world, we, we know why people should go to church. But what if, we, what if we researched some unchurched kind of people? What if we went to secular resources to see what people outside the church have found out about those of us that do go to church? So I found an interesting article in the New York Times. The author was T.M. Uh, T. Lerman. And uh, he said this in this article. Now, he's researching. Just They did a whole bunch of research to find out the benefits of going to church. Number one, and I thought this was awesome. Number one thing that they found is going to church boosts the immune system. Hello, we should have been here the last three months, right? You know? I love this one. It also decreases our blood pressure, unless you're the pastor responsible for the service, right? Okay? Um, they also found that it can add as much as two years to your life. You're probably thinking, yeah, I was in that service once. I, but, you know, it adds life to you. They also found out some other interesting things that uh, there's social support when you get to the church. Isn't it great to get to a place where you know that you're not the only one dealing with stuff? I mean, all of us go through stuff in life. And in the middle of all of it, there is this sense that we can feel so isolated and so unique and nobody has it as bad as you. But listen, once you get to get to church, you find out other people have it as bad or sometimes worse than you, and it just helps to offload or to have to, to, to know somebody else is shouldering this with you. So there's social support. Also, they found out that people who attend church regularly have improved marriages. Isn't that good? That's really good. Nobody has an improved marriage going to the bar, but you have an improved marriage going to church. I just think it's, it's great. Also, it's a place where you can serve what a shameless plug to get volunteers, right? But it is. You can serve at the church. Also, there is accountability. Some people I've met in life, they say, well, I read the Bible, and I believe in God, and I pray, and all that kind of thing, but they don't go to church. And sometimes when people kind of get this, this thing in their head that I believe in God and read the Bible and all that kind of stuff, but they don't attend church, they, they get theologically just weird, you know? They just can go off on a tangent. So sometimes we need to get into a church to kind of weigh our theological beliefs against other things. And so it's a good, a good place for that to, to happen. Also, they found, out, they found out we have better kids by going to church. We have an amazing kids programming at Light Church, but you have better kids. And then... Also, that you can have an influence on the rest of the world around you. I thought, that, I thought all those things are really interesting. And this is what the unchurched people found out about people who go to church all the time. Um, in Psalm 122, verse number 3, it says this. Jerusalem is a well-built city. Its seamless walls cannot be breached. Let me just explain what I think the psalmist is trying to tell us here is that when they looked at Jerusalem, Jerusalem was almost impenetrable. It gave a sense of security. That uh, when we come together as a church, there should be a sense of security here. That we are better together than we are when we're separate. Yep, the church can be the church outside the walls of the church, and we've been the church for the last 12 Sundays, but we're good when we come together. And when we come together, I want you to know there's a sense of security here. That when you come here, there's a God that's been waiting for you. When you come here, there's a God that loves you. When you come here, there's a Jesus that died for you. When you come here, there's people that accept you. When you come here, you feel the safest and securest than any other place in the city of Williston. You just need to know that in this place, that the, the whole of this church is greater than the sum of its parts. United, united, we can do incredible things as we move together. And that's the church. United, we stand. 
And how many of you know that if we want to send a message of unity, today we need to send a message of unity more than ever to these United States of America, that if there's division anywhere, there's no division in the church. We stand together because we're all following. Remember, one faith, one Lord, one Father, one baptism, one glorious hope. There's not different heavens There's not different gods. There's one God. There's one heaven. There's one hope. There's one resurrection. There's one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I'm telling you, it's just one. We work together that way. That's the church. Verse number four says this. All the tribes of Israel, the Lord's people, that could be you and me, we uh, we, we, make our pilgrimage here. They come to give thanks in the name of the Lord as the law requires of Israel. What the psalmist is talking about there are the three annual festivals that the Jews celebrated at the time that this was written. I'm telling you, if you were a Jew at the time, really a devout Jew, it would have been awesome because God prescribed for the Jews feasts, celebrations, parties. This is awesome. So three times a year, You came to Jerusalem, maybe you lived in Jerusalem or you lived in the surrounding region, and three times a year you would come to celebrate a feast. I just love this about church. We come and we celebrate on a Sunday morning. We should celebrate when we come to church on Sunday morning. Are you with me on that one? And then you know what you do after you celebrate? You go eat. I love church, don't you? You know, in the, in the weeks past, Robin and I and the staff, we've been, we've been still showing up here on Sunday mornings, uh, even though we recorded the message and came here. In, in case you didn't, I'll just give you a little secret. Maybe you figured this out after three months. We actually recorded the worship, and the, and the preaching was done on Thursday afternoons about 2 o'clock. And we came in here and sang and preached to an audience of zero. It was exhausting. But the nice thing about it was all the comments were positive. So anyway, uh, it, just, it just went that way. And so uh, then we would come back here, and Pastor Chloe and Pastor Sam would upload the sermon live to Facebook, and they would be responding to your comments on there and putting the scripture verses and the, all the music up there live. That was all happening. And, and uh, the Weeks family, the Wallsteads, Gustafsons, the rest of us, we're all kind of camped out in different places in the, in the church watching the service on our iPads. Like, it was just the weirdest three months. I have no idea where I'm going from here in the message. But... <laughs> Anyway, oh, the three festivals, that's where we're going. Coming together, coming together. Oh, and I'm saying all of that because we were done early in the morning. I mean, church, we, we'd broadcast at 9, right? 10 o'clock, we're done. Go home and eat. I just want to tell you, it's, uh, it's 11.45, and I'm starving, guys. Like, okay? Festivals. The first celebration that they had was this thing called Passover. Now, we recognize Passover is this Jewish holiday that falls, falls right around our, our Easter time. And Passover was the time that the Jews would celebrate when they were delivered from Egypt. The Israelites, the, the Israelites, the Jewish community was in bondage to the Egyptians for 430 years. God sends the deliverer Moses. They put some blood of a lamb over the doors of their houses. And when the death angel comes, he saw the blood and he passed over that house and he spared their lives. This is symbolic of what Jesus does for us. When you say yes to Jesus, the blood of Jesus is applied to your life. And when the death angel comes on the day of judgment, he's going to pass over you because you've got the blood of Jesus on you. And when you have the blood of Jesus on you, your soul is right with God. Your heart is right with God. Your life is right with God. And when it's right with God, you feel right with God. And in those moments, you need to celebrate. You need to rejoice because you've been set free. You've been forgiven. You've been redeemed. Jesus died on the cross. You were a slave just like the Israelites were. You were a slave to the enemy. You didn't know that you were a slave until you woke up with a Passover on Saturday, or with a Passover, a hangover on Saturday morning. Then you knew that you were a slave. And Jesus bought you. He paid a price for you. He extracted you out of slavery. We should all stand, sing, celebrate, shout, dance, and holler because we've been set free. You know the old joke about putting your wife and your dog in the trunk of the car and leave them there for four hours, open the trunk, and see who's happiest to see you, right? <laughs> you know that story. When Jesus sets us free, let's act like the dog, right? <laughs> I read an article the other day, just this morning, as a matter of fact, about a guy who had been wrongly accused of a murder 30 years ago and spent 30 years on death row in prison and just the other day was set free. Can you imagine what it was like for that guy walking out of prison, breathing in the fresh air, looking at the sunshine, sleeping in his bed, hugging the necks of his family, 
Can you just imagine what freedom was like? I don't think he walked calmly out of that place. If he did, on the inside of him, he was dancing, shouting, and celebrating. When you know that Jesus has forgiven your sins, that's exactly the way we respond. That was Passover. If you've never had the opportunity, you've never made Jesus the leader of your life before, you can do it any time, and we'll give you time before we're done here today. The second festival they celebrated was called First Fruits. We call it Pentecost today in the, in the church, but First Fruits was really, it was a time to celebrate God's provision. It was harvest time, and they'd go out and start to harvest their field, and they would take the best part of their crops, and they would sacrifice it, and they would offer it to God in the temple. That's what they did. And it's a place and a time for us to recognize, God, you're the one that makes the rain. I can't manufacture rain. You're the one that made the dirt. You made the seeds. And so I need to honor you with the first of everything I have in my life. Now, that's a shameless plug right here to say, at the end of this service, offering buckets will be standing by for you to give of your first fruits. That's why we give an offering on Sunday mornings. Look, you can, <clears throat> you can give an offering because we've got to pay the light bill and all that kind of stuff. Like, that, that's a practical part of it. But we don't, we don't want your money for that reason. We want you to say, God, I trust you for the provisions that I need in my life. I need a job. I need income. And God, I don't know where the income is going to come from, but you're the provider of the income. You're the one that gives it. And Robin and I, all through our married life, from the time I gave my heart to Jesus, was a percentage giver. I, I heard about giving 10% of your income. And, and so we started there. And 10% is certainly not the, the ceiling. Don't stop there. That's just the floor. That's where you start. But just start somewhere. And see how God does things for you. You can celebrate God's provision every Sunday when you come. The other one that they celebrated was the Feast of Shelters. Um, God prescribed a feast for them. And really, this if you like camping, how many campers do we have here? Weirdos. Anyway, um, <clears throat> camping is nature's way of promoting four-star hotels. Are you with me on that one? Okay. So um, God wanted them to remember where they had come from. And so he said, you are slaves, you are foreigners in the land. And so once a year, they would set up these little shelters, just kind of a little tent thing. And they would stay in them, and they would celebrate and have a feast and a celebration. And really what it was, was a celebration of God's presence wherever they went. In the Old Testament, you can read about God's presence. In the Old Testament, when the Jews came out of Egypt, there was a, a, a pillar that went over them. You think I'm losing my voice? Excuse me, everybody. I don't know if it helped, but thank you. I think a brevet would be phenomenal. <laughs> they, would, um, they would have the presence of God as they were in the wilderness. At nighttime, it would be this, this column of fire. In the daytime, it would be this cloud that would overshadow them. They're in the heat of the wilderness in the desert. But God protected them out there. Eventually, God says, I want you to build me a tabernacle, a tent and I'll manifest my presence there. The priest can come in, only one guy, one time a year, and actually be present where God was. Later on, a guy named Solomon builds a temple. It becomes one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. There, the Ark of the Covenant is placed, and God's presence was manifest there. But again, only one time a year, the priest was able to go in and be in the very presence of God. God wants us to enjoy his presence. We know about a tabernacle, but he's built a tabernacle not with human hands. The tabernacle now is in you because a guy named Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians. He says, don't you realize that your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He says again in the next letter he writes in Corinthians, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you say yes to God, this holy God doesn't have a meeting place in Detroit or in Chicago or in Memphis. It's in your heart. It's in your life. It's in you that God makes a home right inside of you. It's an amazing thing. His presence is always wherever you go. And then, and then in Revelation 21, we read that when we get to heaven, we don't need these lights. We don't need a sun. We don't need a moon because the very presence of Jesus will illuminate that place. We will be in the presence of Jesus all the time. Wow. Verse 5 says, here, here stand the thrones where judgment is given, the thrones of the dynasty of David. I think what the psalmist wants us to know here is that 
These thrones represent the justice in the house of God. We need justice in the house of God. You know why we need that? Because we need to know when we come to church on a Sunday. We need to know where we are right with God. And we need to know where we're wrong with God. We need the justice of God. And God's justice is fair. It's not impartial. It is not whimsical. He's not given to emotions. He's just and fair all the time. In a church, we can get things right with God. We can get things right with ourselves. We can get things right with others because God is all right all the time. And we need to know that. Sometimes we come to church and have a bad attitude. Not today, but sometimes. And sometimes we need to come to the the church to get that changed a little bit. And sometimes we come to church, we don't, we don't know where we are with God because we feel like we have failed so bad. We did something so, so naughty, so dirty, so filthy that God would never accept us. And nothing could be further from the truth. In, in the church world, we, we, these are just steps. I mean, like if you'd never been to church before and somebody said, oh, what are those at the front? You go, well, they're just steps. But in the church world, we call this an altar, like an altar, like we... And there's a reason for it. I mean, there really is. But did you know that altar is spelled two different ways? I never thought much about this until just some years ago. But an altar where sacrifices are made and we have some religious affiliation with altar, that is A-L-T-E, excuse me, A-L-T-A-R, altar, A-L-T-A-R. But when we change something, you make an alteration to something that has been sown, you alter your course, that is a change. That's A-L-T-E-R. And I would dare say that when you come to church on a Sunday, you can come to the A-L-T-A-R and you can get an A-L-T-E-R in your attitude, in your marriage, in your heart, in your life. And so we, we put a lot of emphasis on just coming up here because this is where change takes place. I like what the psalmist says in Psalm 103, verse 10. He says, you know what? God doesn't punish us for all our sins. He doesn't deal harshly with us like we deserve. Aren't you glad for that? But there's a God waiting for us at an altar on a Sunday morning in a church that says, come on, my arms are open. Let's have a relationship here. Let's get close. Let's not be distant from one another. Too many times I think people come to church thinking that God is waving some big old bony finger at them and a scowl on his face or a stick in his hands. But everything I read in Scripture tells me that God stands here with his arms just wide open saying, come on. I want to hold you and hug you. When you come to church, you need to feel security here. You need to feel safety in the presence of God. And if you ever feel unsafe, it's maybe because God's Holy Spirit is starting to work on some things in your life that need to be altered at the altar. <laughs> you should find security and safety and acceptance in the church. God loves you all. The little church that I told you about moments ago that I dreaded attending, I can still see it in my mind. There was this little Sunday school room, the white uh, blocked walls in there and the tile floor and the, I, I think the benches that we sat on, I'm pretty sure they, they put them in the freezer and then brought them out at night and brought them out in the morning for Sunday school. And on the wall, there was a piece of butcher block paper hanging on the wall. And I remember Mrs. Bitterman teaching us this new song, Jesus Loves the Little Children of the World all the children of the world. And then I remember that was written, uh, I don't know, with pencil or something. And then, and then she took marker red. She used a red marker. And then she used yellow marker. And then she used a black marker. And I don't know what she did for white. But anyway, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. That's church. That's diversity. That's the God that loves us. And we should know that when we come to this place. That we found, we found uh, this place of acceptance and security with God because it's, it's just one God that made all of us, isn't it? Verse number six says, pray for peace in Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. Jerusalem was symbolic of God's presence with his people. I think we need to pray for one another, that one another experiences the power and the peace and the presence of God because you and I know while it might be safe and secure inside the walls of Life Church, we all got to go leave this building someday and go back to that big, mean, ugly, nasty thing called life outside the walls of this church. 
And we all need to know the presence and the power and the peace of God. It's okay for us to pray for each other for those things. We just need to do that. Verse number seven, oh, Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls, prosperity in your palaces. Isn't it true that what we all want in our lives is peace and prosperity? It's okay to pray for that so long as the prosperity to you means I have the presence of God in my life. I have the power of God in my life. I have the peace of God in my life. And we should pray for that for one another. He goes on to say in verse number eight, for the sake of my family and friends, I will say, may you have peace. We all want peace for our family. We all want peace for our friends. We all want peace in the United States of America. We all want peace in our spirit. We all want peace in our mind. We all want peace in the workplace. We all want that kind of a peace. Verse number nine, he finishes, for the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I'm going to ask what is best for you, O Jerusalem. You know what's best for Jerusalem is the same thing that's the best for you and for me, that when we come together, we celebrate our forgiveness, that we celebrate God's presence, that we celebrate that God has redeemed us, that we celebrate the provisions of God. Let me just ask you this as we finish up. Isn't peace what we all want and need? And just imagine if we made church attendance a priority. I love the fact that you are here this morning. People couldn't wait to get here this morning. I talked to one dad this morning. He says, I'm so glad that you're here. He says, oh, my family for the last week and a half. It would have taken a team of 20 horses couldn't have held them back from coming to this place. I'm so glad that you came here. You came here expecting something, wanting something, needing something, desiring something. Can you imagine if we came every Sunday with that same expectation, that same hope that when we come here and come together and expect Expect and anticipate a living God to meet with us. You never know what's going to happen in this place. And it could happen any moment. Imagine if we just made church attendance a priority. If we would just celebrate his provisions and his peace and his power. Let me ask you this. If church attendance was more of a priority for you, do you you think your life would be better or worse? Do you think your marriage would be better or worse? Do do you think your, your children would be better off or worse off? What do you think? I think I know the answer. Father, we just pause right now and just say thank you. Thank you, God, that when we are absent from you, you're never absent from us. Lord, thank you for providing for us in times that we maybe weren't really even trusting in you, praying to you, but God, some miraculous way you just came through for us. God, thank you that you have reached out towards us to offer us freedom and salvation and redemption and all those things from things that just are are just garbage in our life. And you loved us long before we ever even started thinking about you. And Jesus, today, maybe there's somebody in this room that just knows they need to make a shift in leadership in their life. Today is the day you would say, Jesus. And I, I think of it in terms like this a lot. Because this was, this was my theology. Guys, this was my theology. Growing up, I attended church. I believed in the Bible. I believed in God. I believed in Jesus. I believed, I believed all that stuff. But it didn't change the way I lived. And, and, and usually what I would do is just live my life the way I wanted to live it. If it meant drinking around, sleeping around, partying around, it really didn't matter. The only time I really pulled God out was when I needed him because I'd created a crisis. And I needed, I needed God to step in. Then, then, then I began to pray. Because I was the leader in my life. Jesus was just the follower. And I was expecting him to sweep up the mess, fix my problems. But here's what I discovered on February 2nd, 1986. That when I let Jesus lead, I had a lot less problems in my life. Oh, the difficulties didn't go away, but the problems went away. Because... They were problems I had previously created. Now I was letting Jesus lead me. And it just seemed like a lot of things fit together a whole lot better. Do you need to make that decision today? Do you need to make that decision right now? And just shift the focus over to Jesus' agenda. You know somebody that does. And God, we are just so grateful for the way you've taken care of us these last three months. And now together, we're in your house. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now, here we are. Church, will you stand to your feet with me this morning? I've asked the worship team to just hang out with us for for a little while longer, and here's what we're going to do. We're just going to sing. 
because God is so good. And as we sing, if you want to come to the altar, because something needs to be altered, you just come. If you want to come to the altar because you just want to feel more connected and closer to God, you can come. You just move your posture as you begin to pray and praise. And can we just sing? And can we just celebrate because God is so good? Sing it with Pastor Chloe and our worship team. God, you're so good. Just come on, sing it out to him. God, you're so good. You've been so faithful to us. Oh, we just love you. We long for you. Just sing it out to him. He's listening to you sing. This is your prayer song. It's a prayer song. You're singing this to him. His ears are listening to this. God, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Just sing it right from here, from your heart, from the depths inside. He's so good to us. If you want to come, come. You're so good, oh Lord, and we worship you. Just sing. Let's celebrate. Let's worship. says, I am blessed, I am called, I am healed, I am whole, I am saved in Jesus' name. I just felt like the Holy Spirit was impressing on me that there are people here who, as we were singing that, just feel like, no, I'm not, I'm not blessed, healed, whole, saved in Jesus' name, highly favored, anointed, all that stuff. I don't feel that because I'm carrying maybe shame um, about things that I've done. So I just want us to sing that out again together. And if, if that was you, if that is you, just know that there's no shame here. Pastor Chris talked about this. God is, is fully just. He's providing an opportunity for us to get right with him, but he's not shaking his finger at you. He's not shaking his finger saying, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, you're a bad person. You can't have my blessings. He is here standing with open arms, welcoming you to come back to him. So would you do that this morning? Come back to the Father. He is waiting. He is ready for you. This is who you are in Jesus' name.
pray, I just, you know, sometimes I don't know when I pray church, if it's what I ate for breakfast, if I'm hungry now, or if it's God, but no, I just want to pray over this thing in your heart, you're feeling shame. You know, shame and guilt are such close cousins. Usually we, we, we've, something maybe has happened to you, and what's interesting about this whole thing is something can be done to you at the deepest emotional level and, and somehow the enemy twists that into making us believe this was our fault and then shame is right there on the doorstep and he grabs a hold of guilt and pulls him right in the door with him so I, I pray against that right now in the name of Jesus I pray against shame in the name of Jesus and I pray for restoration I pray for sweetness of spirit Pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit is just melting away guilt and shame right now. And, and Lord, making that person see them in all the beauty that you see when you look at that person. Lord God, that you want them to see their value and their worth. Father, I pray today for people, there's healing that you need in the body. We, we, just, we just know people healed in the last service. Father, I pray against diabetes right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, you take hold of that pancreas, and Lord God, you just you just make everything work as you meant it to work in, in their mother's womb right now in the name of Jesus. We pray against diabetes in the name of Jesus. We, we just pray against that. You heal that right now, Lord God. I pray over lupus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that lupus, lupus is being healed right now. Lord God, that you're reaching into the soul of that person. Lord God, they can feel something warm in their body, and they just know something is happening inside of them. Lord, that you're healing at the molecular level. You're healing at the cellular level right now in the name of Jesus. Lupus, in Jesus' name, be gone. Fibromyalgia, right along with that. We just pray, Lord God, that these bodies know that they have been created by the Creator. Lord God, we live in a broken world stained with sin. But Jesus, your blood was shed. By your stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus. Heal that now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Jesus name I pray for the tension that has existed in the home between husband and wife I pray Lord God that you help them to see their hearts to know what motivates them why they think and feel and say the things that they do and Lord God that you step in mightily and there's a great revolution that takes place in that marriage it's a restoration Lord God it's it's an amazing moment right now Lord I pray for those lonely lonely in heart and spirit Lord God, just longing to be filled. Holy Spirit, would you just flow over that soul right now in the name of Jesus? Lord God, you've heard their prayer. They're longing for a soulmate. Lord God, you just hear the longing alone at night, Lord Jesus. Father, fill that emptiness now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, for um, I'm just sensing somebody here. You wanted, you just came to church expecting to feel something. You wanted to be moved emotionally. And that is totally okay to want that. But you understand, we serve God by faith, not by sight. And so whether we feel Him or don't feel Him does not negate the fact that God is in this place. Yeah. That God lives in you. That God loves you. Jesus, just overwhelm that soul in the name of Jesus. You're so good, oh Lord. You're so good to us, God. Hallelujah, Lord. You are so good and gracious and kind. Hallelujah, Lord. Let there be just a, a great revival in the land, oh God. We just pray the church begins to shine and shine bright. Lord Jesus, we just pray that you step into riotous situations. Lord Jesus, and that, God, there's angelic hosts that step into those 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 elements, Lord God, and that, Lord, with bolts of lightning and peals of thunder, you reveal there's a God that speaks from heaven, Lord God, to the nation. Jesus, make your name great amongst your people, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we just give you praise. God, you're so good, so good. We need you so much, Heavenly Father. We rely so heavily upon you. Oh God, so good you are. sense something. We're just emotional people. 
I don't know about you, when I came here today, I already knew that something was going to happen. You plug in Christmas lights, and they all light up different colors, but they're all plugged into the same source. And when you and I come into the presence of this living God, we all respond to him differently. Some want to shout, dance, sing. Some want to just sit quiet and still in his presence. Some weep, some laugh. All of that is permissible. Yeah. And we should be emotionally responsive to the God who created our emotions. He made us to be emotional people. And it's okay to respond to him that way, not just today, but anytime in your car, in bed at night, when you're just crying out to God, in the morning when you awaken and when you come back to church again, to just celebrate because God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is healing something in a heart today. I, the word rejection has just popped into my head. There's been a rejection. It's a rejection from a parent. A rejection in a, in a, in a, in a breakup. You have just taken this so personal, this rejection. But I'm telling you right now that your value is not tied to that relationship. Your value is tied to your creator. Yeah. And his name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. He has never rejected you. He does not cross his arms and turn his back on you. He's holding out his arms to you right now and saying, I love you. Would you just trust me? I've got something for you right now. I'm just holding you in my embrace. You are not rejected. That is not truth. Truth, truth is found in me. Rejection is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, I don't know about you, but I think, I think we should come back and do this again next week. I think we'll come back again next week and we're going to worship and we're going to sing and shout. I kept you for 10 minutes longer than the first service. Um, I love you guys. Robin loves you. We all love you. The staff loves you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, as you leave today, Robin and I are going to greet you at the back door. We ask you to partner with us. You know, I, I failed to say this first service. So many of you were incredibly faithful through this, this quarantine time and continue to give online or drop off a check or whatever. Thank you so much. You guys are just amazing, amazing givers. Um, Robin and I ask you to join with us. We've got offering buckets in the back with 350-pound bodyguards standing by each one. And uh, no, just, I'm just kidding about that. Um, just partner with us in giving today and just show God the first fruits that he's faithful. Let's sing one more time. And as we're singing, God is so good. If you want to be dismissed, just make your way out. But I think, I think it's good for us just to celebrate that. When you go home in your car today, you go home in your truck, you just shut off the radio and you just start to sing, God, you're so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. just sing it right now with Pastor Chloe. God, you're so good. Oh, oh sing God, it on. Yes, God. You're so, so faithful. Good. So good to us. Your presence is powerful. God. Sing it out. God, God you're so good.